Ah yes, the government threatening legal actions against the comedian. <laughs> Always a surefire sign of an open, free and thriving society that ends. No doubt about it, as a comedian specifically famous for shocking and horrible content has made a shocking joke. <laughs> and for some reason, everyone was surprised by this, to the point where the cultural secretary of the supposedly conservative UK government is saying that a new law would hold Netflix to account after shocking Jimmy Carr joke. Are we back in 2010 again? Are we actually going to go after literal, professional comedians making jokes at a comedy show after having given a goddamn trigger warning? This is the peak of idiocy, and the worst part to it, again, it is Nadine Doris, the cultural culture secretary, the conservative, excuse me, who has been in quite a lot of hot weather herself for several relatively hot takes, at least by the modern day wokest standard. She's even quite famous for once having said that snowflakes were killing comedy. Well, Nadine, you have become the snowflake. Maybe you should reflect upon that just a little bit, but. Oh well, details. And I just want to make something perfectly clear as well here. Jimmy Carr has built his entire career on shocking jokes. That is his entire shtick, basically. He will lead you down one path, very skillfully as well, mind you. I'm not taking the piss. Jimmy Carr is absolutely awesome. And then, once he's got you safe and secure, and then, oh, this is a nice story, he'll whip right around and go the completely opposite direction, all whilst maintaining a perfect deadpan whilst he does it. He is brilliant. To give you a little bit of an idea, um, one of my favorite jokes, and I'm gonna butcher it, but do forgive me, was, um, I once had a relationship with a blind woman. It was very challenging, but also very rewarding. It took me ages to get the voice of a husband just right. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I love it, because it is, it's so goddamn dark, and yet it's covered underneath this fluffy exterior. It's exactly the kind of comedy I love, because it is inherently absurd. Jimmy Carr, in many ways, share my philosophy that absurdity makes things funny. So you create a story, you spin a web that creates a setting, and then you go completely against that setting, making it absurd, and therefore people go ha ha ha, because crazy things are funny, as it turns out, which is why his latest joke about the Holocaust is also goddamn hilarious. <sighs> should I, uh, sh should I really? Dare I do it on YouTube? Hell, let's go with it. Quoting from The Guardian here, YouTube, just to, just to clarify. <clears throat> Khan joked about the horror of six million Jews' lives being lost. Oh, do you don't quote the entire joke yet? You absolute pussies! Okay, it was something about the lines of, um, everyone knows about the Holocaust, the, the horrible, atrocious events of the Holocaust where six billion Jews were killed. But what no one talks about, nobody knows, is the fact that tens of thousands of gypsies and Romani were also killed. Nobody ever wants to talk about the positives. <laughs> Again. I undoubtedly butchered that, particularly by breaking into a grin at the end, but it is a goddamn funny joke. Because again, it creates this, this feeling of normality, oh the holocaust is bad, and then it whips the, uh, right back around again with the absurdity. It's good goddamn comedy! And yet... What is it here? Uh, there, there's been a whole thing about this. Uh, So-called comedians are like, Oh, this, this isn't funny, this is cruel and inhumane and mean-spirited and racist. I wasn't aware the gypsies were a race, but then again, considering uh, Oprah Winfrey was recently suspended for uh, suggesting that the Jews weren't a race, I guess. I'll, uh, I'll just take your word for it. I wouldn't want to go against the narrative now, would I? And this too. Supposedly, a comedian and writer, this man is neither of these things, goes on to say, Meanwhile, away from the stupid discussion about the limits of comedy, my sympathies are virtue signal, virtue signal, virtue signal. 
the limits of comedy. Nobody who has ever seriously discussed the limits of comedy should be allowed to call themselves a comedian. But the problem here is too, we keep seeing this so goddamn much and well, actually, there are two primary problems here. One is the supposed comedians having already made it big, many of them of content just as shocking for their time, now sitting in their plushy mansions, in their established careers and going, you know what? I don't like these up-and-coming comedians, I think I shall pull up the ladder behind me and condemn them for doing what I used to do in the day. The, the guy who made the Faulty Towers thing, for example. Excellent example of that. Peter Dinklage is another one. Oh, we can't have dwarves in Snow White? I'm already famous. Why give anyone else the opportunity? That would make me far less unique, after all. And the second and far bigger one, because Assholes being assholes is no new thing, and right now we are luckily in a period of time where actors are by and large recognized as the scum of the earth that they are. The far larger problem is with people like Nadine Doris, conservatives in name only, who will regurgitate the rhetoric of, well, us, basically, the people on the internet, and they will repeat it, oh yes, no, snowflakes, ha ha ha, wokeists, ha ha ha, yes, aren't they silly, I'm totally not for any of that, what, offensive comedy, no, 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 we must make that illegal. <sighs> Because again, they'll regurgitate the talking points, but they will not actually understand any of it. <sighs> Khan issued a trigger warning to the audience at the beginning of his one hour special. <laughs> I hate the fact that he even did offer a trigger warning, like, Hello, you're to Jimmy Carr show, shit will be horrible. <sighs> but fair enough, I guess. The various usual uh, suspects, the anti-hate groups who do nothing but hate on everything, came out and condemned the joke. And that too. Right, let me just, um, right. let me just lead, let me just read you this sentence a couple of times, right? Just, just to make it sink in. I want to hammer this home. I want to hammer home the absurdity of this. New laws would hold to account streaming sites airing jokes. New laws would hold to account streaming sites airing jokes. Jesus. One more time. New laws being proposed by the conservative cultural secretary would hold to account streaming sites for jokes. <laughs> what kind of fascist regime is Britain turning into when even the conservatives are basically just progs, except they wear blue? <sighs> it is a thorough rot in our current day society, and it is the problem with career politicians. There should be no profession lower down on the totem pole than career politician. Prostitutes, chimney sweepers, professional garbage disposal people, the people who come and suck the sewage out of my septic tank, all of these should in society be held much, much higher than a career politician. Career politicians should barely even be recognized as human beings at this point, round about the same level as games journalists round about things that crawl on the dirt. You know, um, what was it God said? Oh yes, uh, from ever henceforth, career politician, you shall crawl on the dirt in the manner of a snake. Yes, I believe that's a direct quote from the Bible right there. Oh my god, I hate this so much. I really do. I, I hate this so much. Hundreds of thousands of Rama and Sinti people suffered prejudice, slave labor, sterilization, and mass murder simply because of their identity. Yes. And you know what else is uh, what was actually correct? Jimmy Carr was right when he said nobody ever talks about that. Because it's a little known fact that the Germans didn't go after just the Jews. In fact, the Jews were just one out of the category of subhumans, Untermensch, as I mentioned previously. Uh, the Guaymans had a rather fluid view on the idea of race, and had several different rankings, amongst which the lowest was, of course, the Jews, obviously, and then there was the Slavs and Romani people of various descriptions as well. Gypsies in general were not particularly well liked by the Nazis. Shock and horror, I do know. 
And nobody talks about it. Nobody knows it. If you asked most people how the Romani were treated under Nazi reign, they'd probably go, uh, not very well, I guess. But they wouldn't know. In fact, Jimmy Carr makes an excellent point when he defends the joke later on, saying it's edgy as hell and goddamn funny and educational to boot. Because it is. <sighs> and yet, it is cruel, inhumane, and again, mean-spirited and racist. It's just, a, it's just a collection of words at this point, isn't it? Cruel, inhumane, mean-spirited, and racist. Alright, shut your mouth, ex-comedian, supposed writer, go back to Twitter, bury yourself in your echo chamber, don't worry, we'll have a thumbs up and thumbs down on Twitter damn soon to ratio you more effectively, and leave the actual comedians alone. How about that? Wouldn't that be lovely? Unlikely to happen, but oh well. I've also been, I've been talking about this for quite a few times now, the idea of these new laws being introduced. Many of them are targeting the big tech companies, and this is a good thing, this is a fantastic thing, this is something we must do, but... Mm. I've also talked about the danger with it. Whenever you start giving the government power, there is always the possibility that they'll start abusing it. And the conservative in name only current government of the UK is just that kind of government who will see a legitimate need for control over multi-billion dollar tech giants that have more money than most sovereign states do. And then they'll go, hold on, I can use this to push my personal bullshit agenda as well. <sighs> no politician should ever be allowed to grow old. The moment you hit the age of about 30, let's put it down there, you're no longer allowed to be a politician. Over 30, you're gonna move on to be something else. Something higher up on the, on the social rank order, like, um, sewage disposal person or prostitute. <laughs> Either or are valid options after having been a career politician, in my opinion. And goddamn, as a final little aside, what an unfathomable disappointment Boris Johnson turned out to be. Holy hell. He is the arc example of the conservative who speaks the speak, he says everything right, he apes the rhetoric of the internet, of the actual free speech people, the genuine revolutionaries, not the commie ones, but the ones who actually want to try and save our society. And then the moment he gets in power, it's right around and every Pink's a shit opinion gets hauled right on out and plastered front and center. Because for some reason, they still think that they need to kowtow to the progressives. Oh. You gotta wonder what kind of blackmail material they've got on Boris Johnson. He got elected in one of the biggest landslide victories in UK history on the back of our rhetoric. And then, when it's in power, he figures he needs to count out to progressives. I Absolute idiot. Absolute shameful moron. And on that happy note, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and do go check out Jimmy Carr's Netflix special, because if this many people are pissed off about it, I'm sure it's absolutely goddamn awesome. Have a good day.